Hello! Last time I showed you how to print and make your own retro joystick. In this video, I'll show you how to connect it to a modern PC via USB. Before going any further, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. If you'd like to be a Patreon, consider supporting me by following the links in the video description. To connect up the joystick, we're going to have to use USB. Now I could just show you the end result, but a little bit of background is always useful. I'm not going to go into too much detail into how USB works because it's quite complex. When a USB device is plugged into a computer, the computer needs to understand what kind of device it is. It does this by exchanging a series of messages that detail the class of the device. In our case, it would be HID, or Human Interface Device. A few other device classes include audio, communications, printer, and so on. The device class is transmitted along with a device descriptor. This descriptor contains a number of sections which explain the various supported features of the device. The operating system will then attempt to load a driver suited to these requirements. These are usually included if the device follows one of the standard device classes. However, sometimes a custom driver may be required. Many years ago I developed a virtual touchscreen device for a product I was selling for Windows 7. The virtual device identified itself to Windows as a hid touchscreen device and behaved as expected. Now there's a lot more going on in terms of messaging than just this information, but that's enough information to get us started. Aside from the software, there's the physical side of how USB communicates. The standard USB 1 and 2 protocol has four wires in the plug. Two of them are related to power, the 5 volts and ground connections. The other two are named D plus and D minus. The data is transmitted along these wires bidirectionally. The two wires are not send and receive. They're known as a differential pair or twisted pair. This means when one wire goes high, the other typically goes low and vice versa. The circuit at the other end detects the ones and zeros by comparing the two wires. It looks at the difference between them, outputting a 1 or a 0, depending on which signal is greater than the other. This is how RS-485 communication works, which I'll cover in another video. The reason for doing this is to help reduce electrical noise. The theory being that because the cables are twisted around each other, any electrical noise picked up on one cable will also be picked up the same amount by the other cable. And because the hardware only looks at the difference between the two wires, the noise gets cancelled out. Once these 1s and zeros have been received, they then need to be decoded. USB 1 and 2 uses a protocol based on the NRZI encoding scheme that I mentioned in a previous video. If you want to know more about that, check out my video on how data is written to a floppy disk. So we've gone through some of the background into how USB works. There's a lot more to it than that, but we don't really need to know because thankfully, a lot of the implementation details have already been done for us. Within the vast range of AVR chips, Two specifically come to mind, the ATmega32U4 and the ATmega16U4. You'll have probably used the second one before without realising it. If you take a look at a genuine Arduino Uno, on the official boards, the ATmega16U4 chip is used to provide a USB to serial interface to the ATmega328 chip. You can also reprogram that chip as it stands. However, rather than messing with the Uno, we're going to use an Arduino micro board. The full-size board was originally called the Arduino Leonardo. This board includes the ATmega32U4 microcontroller and features a lot of the same functionality that we're already used to. However, there are several other features that this chip also has, and one such feature is that it can also act as a USB device. The device actually incorporates all the features in hardware to create a USB 12 megabits per second full speed or 1.5 megabits per second low speed device. This means it will handle all the electronic communication for us, leaving us the work of controlling it. Whilst it does handle all the data transfers in each direction, it doesn't actually manage the communications protocol fully for us. Thankfully, however, this work has already been done for us. The included Arduino libraries include a library for HID, and the examples allow you to easily create a USB mouse or keyboard device. So if you wanted to create that silly keyboard with just Control alt delete on it, it's actually quite simple. It doesn't include anything for joysticks though. The library uses a class called Pluggable HID, from which you can make your own devices. And once again, the work has been done for us. Matthew Hieronymus, I hope I pronounced that correctly, created a library called the Arduino Joystick Library, which supports 32 buttons, 2 hat switches, X, Y and Z axis, 
at X, Y and Z rotation axis, rudder, throttle, accelerator, brake and steering. And not only does it come with some great examples, it's incredibly simple to use. We can also disable the features that we're not using. Before going any further, let's first decide how we plan to actually wire the joystick up. We already know the pinout of the joystick from the last video. And, if like me, you kept the other half of the cable we cut off, we even have a suitable socket. We'll connect the wires from that onto the Arduino like this. This will provide the 5 volt power from the USB port as well as connecting up the various switches. So let's start assembling the Arduino. Using the piece of cable that we saved from last time with the plug on it, the first thing we're going to do is strip the sheath off it. And once that's complete, we're going to then strip the ends of each of the wires. Next, we'll tin each of the end of the wires to make them easier to solder later on. I've designed a small little 3D printed box for this Arduino, so I'm going to put a cord grip on here now before we go any further. Links for the box that I've designed are in the description below. However, it will only fit the Arduino that I'm using, the official one's a little bit larger. Once the cable grip is secured with a cable tie, we'll move on to the soldering. First, I attach the ground and 5 volt connections. And then I make my way through the other cables, the up, the down, the left, the right and the two fire buttons. Now using a little bit of sticky back foam padding, I stick the board into the new box. Then tuck all the wires inside, and then clip it together. It's quite a neat little solution really. You can optionally add these connecting poles so that you can connect the joystick and screw it together. So the board's built, now onto the programming. You'll first need to install the Arduino joystick library. This is easy to do, just follow the instructions on the GitHub page. Once installed, you can clearly see it appears in the Arduino IDE. The code for this project is so simple that I'm just going to talk you through what I've actually written. The first thing I do is define each Arduino pin to what action it performs on the joystick. Next, we create an instance of this joystick class. You don't need to provide all these parameters, but I'm overriding to remove the things that we don't need. For example, the default is 32 buttons. We don't want to continuously be sending updates about the joystick to the computer. We only want to do it when something changes. So we're going to use these variables to hold the current state. In the setup function, we're going to configure the pins that we're using as input pull-up. This means that they default to 5 volts and we have to pull them down to ground, which is how the joystick works. Then we start the joystick library. This causes all the USB handshaking to occur so that the computer knows what type of device is connected. We pass in false so that we manually tell it when to send a joystick update. The next two lines are associated with controlling the range of the X and Y of the joystick. As we're using micro switches, they can only be on or off, so in this case our range goes from minus one to one. The next thing we do is we read in the current state of the up, the down, the left and the right. And depending on whether they're pressed or not, we set the value of the associated direction to minus one, one, or let it go back to zero. We then compare these values to what they were last time, and if they've changed, we update that information in the joystick library and set a flag so we know that they've changed. We then perform a similar process for the joystick buttons. First we read their state, and then we check to see if they've changed from last time. Finally, if anything has actually happened, we tell the joystick library to send an update. The last thing we do is delay for 10 milliseconds. We don't need to worry about switch bounce here, because the delay of 10 milliseconds will more than cover that time. Once connected, my board identified as Arduino Leonardo, but yours may identify as Arduino Micro. They're the same, it doesn't matter. And once you've selected that from the menu, you can upload this program. You can get a copy of this program in the links in the description of this video. The last thing we need to do is test this interface. So I'm going to use the Windows control panel that allows you to play with the joysticks that are plugged in. Once again, mine shows up in Windows as Arduino Leonardo. And testing it as follows, you can clearly see that it works perfectly. So as you can see, it really isn't that hard to make an adapter like this. You could also mod this in future to include more buttons or any other features that you wanted. You could also put the circuit board inside the joystick itself. And in which case you probably wouldn't need the rapid fire circuit either, because you could build that in the Arduino. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribe to my channel. 
Also, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.